Hey everyone, today is March 13th, 2023, and I'm going to show you everything I have here inside of my shelter. Another thing, people always ask me, why do I never make eye contact with the camera? Well, right now, I'm looking directly at the screen. The camera lens is right over there. You know, I can't really see, if I'm looking at the camera right now, I can't see the screen a couple inches over. That's all it is. So let me show you around my shelter. So today, March 13th, we are getting a big snowstorm. I don't know if it started yet, but this area of New Hampshire that I'm doing this camp in is supposed to get anywhere from 12 to 18 inches of snow. It's supposed to start very late, around 11 or 12 midnight. It's supposed to snow all day the 14th tomorrow, all day. But I'm not staying here all day tomorrow. I'm gonna come out of here as soon as daybreak happens. It's now 8 p.m. and I'm probably gonna leave here at 7 a.m. as soon as the sun comes up. First, I wanna take you guys down in my video I posted on Post 10. I'm gonna show you, if I walk out of this culvert, maybe 100 feet, we come across a actual pretty cool river. We'll see how much snow there is on the ground if I actually do that or not. But I'm gonna show you everything I have in my shelter and how I put this thing together. So right now we're in a cast iron culvert. It's got like two inches thick of steel. It's so strong. It'll be here for hundreds of years. It's already been here over a hundred years. Right now this is a recreation slash logging road. Right now it's a snow, not a snowmobile trail, at least not this far out. We walked about three miles in. Uh, from the car, it's almost four miles on this road. Um, so yeah, basically a four mile walk out here. Three miles is the actual road that I'm camping on, which you cannot drive on at all in the winter. Snowmobile trail joins it and leaves it a couple times, and I think that's just so it can use the bridges on the road. But this far up, it's just for skiers and snowshoers, which I'm doing. I snowshoed out here. I think that was about probably a two hour hike to walk out here. At the beginning of it was kind of challenging because there was a one mile hill I had to walk up. And that's why I modified my sled so it has a handle behind it because tomorrow that's going to be very challenging to stop a 200 pound sled going down that steep grade for a mile. So this entire thing is put together with this is mylar. It's very good at reflecting heat, keeping heat in. These are emergency blankets from eBay. They are, I believe, 48 by 84 inches a piece, and they're only $1 each sheet. I bought 10 of them, and I believe I used one, two, three, four, five, six of them. I'll probably buy more. It's all being held to the walls with magnets. You see, where it's actually touching, there's condensation because the culvert is right there. That is the culvert. Where it's hanging, there's just some fog like in a bathroom because I'm boiling water here. That's my tea. See how strong the burner can get? Go ahead and shut that off so I can have it when it cools down. It's put together with 40 of these magnets and I still didn't have enough. I think I'm gonna buy even more of these magnets so all these loose ends could be sealed if I ever do it again. These magnets, you get them in 10 packs on Amazon for 24 bucks. They're pretty strong. They're miniature fishing magnets. They have a lot of pull on them. You ca I cannot pull that thing straight off. I'm going to have to, like, shear it off, if that's the right word. On the other side of this, I have one of those foam, uh, you know, the shiny pieces for your windshield. It's corrugated, so it adds a bunch of structural strength. That came from Walmart's discount shelf. I actually bought 10 of them. I wish I would have brought a couple more, and then I wouldn't have this issue with the wind sucking in and out. It's completely stopping the wind. I don't have any breezes in here at all, but it's trying. That's why it keeps buckling in and out. A lot of magnets around here. If we were to pull this down, there's another series of magnets with a bunch of clamps on them, and that's what's holding all that stuff together. Um, got my power banks in here. This one's running the camera light. I have been in here since 8 a.m., so basically 12 hours, and we only burned through half of this. I typically run this light on 1%. This is only 1% the light you're seeing. 
Now that's 100%. Not really necessary. It burns through batteries like crazy on 100%. But if you leave it down in the single digits or so, it goes a pretty long time. I got a headlamp. Here's some earplugs, because I actually didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I drove right up here, because when I anticipate doing something exciting like this, I just can't sleep. Got three hours of sleep last night. Drove up here about two hours into New Hampshire, and I slept in here for six hours once I set it up. Just crashed, went right to sleep for six hours in the shelter. Woke up around three in the afternoon, had something to eat around five. That was actually a mistake. I had eight hot dogs with buns. You know, I had four. A couple hours later, had the other four. And I'm so tired of them after that. I struggled to eat the, the last three of them. Not because I was full. I waited a few hours in between. I'm just sick of them. It was too many. I'm, gonna, I'm laying down so I can get a better view here. Duct tape I used. Because these are very thin and they easily rip. But you can reinforce it with this. In fact, part of it, I actually stretched this across the entire thing to give it strength. Just like you see them doing in places with hurricanes. They put duct tape across the windows thinking it reinforces them. That's actually a myth when it comes to glass. It does not help them from cracking. All it does is stops the glass from falling and shattering all over the ground. And sometimes it doesn't even do that. But it does work with these walls. Here's all the wrappers from the emergency blankets that I gotta throw out later. Bunch of tent stakes, screws weren't necessary on this trip. Screwdriver not necessary. Pliers maybe. Some of these magnets are hard to get off. They have a pretty good pull force. Rip them off with a magnet. Zip ties, screwdriver. All right, let me show you what's in the next bin. Here's another power bank for the phone I'm using now. Phone running all day on time lapses. Oh, I also edited like five hours worth of footage in my spare time out here. Still got 50%. These batteries come from Walmart. It's supposed to be able to charge the average cell phone six times. And they work really good. They're pretty cheap compared to other brands. I've had two of them explode in the past, but it was my fault. I tried to charge them in the car while they were cold. Let these things heat up for at least a half an hour when you get them home before you give them a charge, or they could explode. But otherwise, they work good. They work in the cold weather. They've never given me a problem. In fact, it's the camera that gives me a problem, and it shuts off if it's outside uh, in temperatures below zero for, like, more than 20 minutes. Like, when you see me filming those ice videos, can't be out there filming for too long. It also refuses to charge if it's, like, below 15 it's in my trash bag. Bought this at Walmart. This is like um, basically an MRE. You pour a cup and a half of boiling water in here and it's done in just a couple minutes. It's freeze dried. Bear spray just in case. I don't think the bears are out of hibernation yet. But who knows, we had a 50 degree day two days ago, and that sometimes can get them to temporarily come out, but I'm sure they're back in now with the snowstorm about to happen. See this right here? You can see a little residue of the bear spray. I put my tongue on there and burned a lot for like 20 minutes or so. Just curious. Pepper spray is not nearly as bad, and I've tasted that before. You do not want to get this stuff near you. If you had to spray this in a culvert like this, you better spray it at the bear and get out the other end really fast without breathing or anything. And here is hand warmers. Won't be necessary. It's not that cold out. It's only like 28 degrees outside right now. Overnight, we're only going to get down to like 19 or something. Two more headlamps. Another power bank. Toothpaste, toothbrush. Another camera light. This one's really good too, but it's kind of awkward. That's why it's a last resort if I completely run out of other batteries. Got some dish soap right here, which I probably won't even use on this trip since the only thing I'm doing is boiling tea, which isn't really needed to be cleaned out. You see, I can open the floor right here where this joint is so I can have access to the water flowing underneath me. It's flowing at a pretty good rate. I estimate by what I see flowing a day, I'll probably have a, over 100,000 gallons of water going under me throughout this camp. Tea. 
cornbread. I'm so full after those eight hot dogs. I don't think I'll eat anything else tonight. Got my CO detector. My little frying pan you see me use in other videos. I just bought this kit. He got a pot with a cover. Uh, a, I guess a bowl. You could use it as a pan if you wanted. A little measuring cup. They all fit into each other with this one around it. You know, it all compacts into one little thing, which is pretty cool. That's why I bought it. This is a lighter. It's like a little blowtorch on the end of it, so it doesn't blow out in the wind. You can't really see it with the camera flash, but it's going. It's windproof. This was only uh, $2 at Walmart. I just bought this burner so I could cook stuff with it. This is You can also use this burner for heating. When this is on high, it produces a good amount of heat. This, I'm leaving the pilot light going because that's actually adding a good amount of heat in here to make it comfortable. Not enough to keep it hot, but it's something. If I go ahead and turn it on low, even low is a little bit too hot. Someone taught me how you can flip this thing up. You disconnect the whole guard, put it upside down, and I, you see it's a little... I cooked hot dogs on this. You can boil water on this, but I would severely advise against it and get one of these. Because if you accidentally spilled this onto that ceramic catalyst, it'll shatter instantly and this will be destroyed. Don't ever get water in there when it's hot. Well, this thing is very sturdy, though. See the little stand for the propane tank and all that? Just picked that thing up at Walmart. Almost cool enough for me to drink since I shut that off 10 minutes ago. See, this is about to start glowing orange. Oh, I also brought olives. I love olives. I don't like them on pizza or salads, but I love them plain. I'll eat that whole jar if I'm hungry enough. I wasn't hungry enough when I opened it. This is water I brought from home. And I could boil as much water as I need from below me. I trust it. Water's very clean when we were this far out in the middle of nowhere. Not much going on. This culvert I'm in, it used to be, I, I believe, a railway culvert before a logging uh, road culvert. Because this whole area used to be logging trains and stuff over 100 years ago until a devastating forest fire. Every single thing burned to the ground. It's since grown back, but the trees aren't doing great lately with all the invasive bugs moving in. These drinks are really good from Walmart. They're like 70-something cents currently. I love this. It's so strong and vibrant in flavor. They also have the key lime flavor. They have apples really good too. Black cherry. Black cherry is not my favorite just because I'm kind of tired of it. Now, these have zero sugar, but they do have what you call aspartame in it, which is a sweetener. But they say that you're more likely to get the diabetes that, from the sugar than the cancer from this sweetener in it. So, it's up to you what you want to do. I get that because I don't want to get more cavities when I'm out places like this and I'm not able to do the best hygiene. Here's an empty propane cylinder. We're being very efficient today. I only burned through one, and I believe we started this trip, and this was only half full. Is this thing out? Oh, we did. I think we just burned through another one. Did we just burn through another can of propane? It doesn't feel like it. It does not. I don't know how that went out. It's possible that we just went through another. But we're being pretty efficient because of the way I have this encapsulated. The first time we did a culvert camp with the propane heater, remember it was that concrete culvert? That, remember it had a big gap? I had actual plywood walls on each end. I'm probably not going to do that again because for safety reasons, I could plow through either of these ends so easily. This stuff is so thin, it wouldn't even break the magnets off. It would just rip. And you don't have to carry around all that weight. Because remember, I walked many miles. This plywood floor is the majority of the weight that I brought out here. I pulled like 200 pounds worth of stuff out here with me. That's why I have big snowshoes to compensate for the weight distribution. Just bought this Smith & Wesson knife at Walmart. Very sharp. I've already used it to open a few things. And a couple forks. One of them's dirty, kinda. I was using it to eat the olives. See this? Open this clamp and we have a whole nother room out here but I'm not heating it. I'm sure just being near it, it's it's definitely warmer than outside, but you see I have a whole nother room here 
with the sled parked in it. So in the morning when I'm ready to go, before I take down that wall, I can pack everything up, you know, and I'm in a nice heated place. Then the last thing to be packed up is my heater. Then the piece of plywood goes on top of this with all those bungee cords holding it down. Since the last time I went camping, I drilled holes every couple inches because bungee cords slip off of this edge very easily. So I drilled a bunch of holes to secure it to. I also put a handle on that end of it so I can break it going down hills. Because this thing, you don't want to be slowing it down from in front. This thing could easily run you over. Just in case I ran out of food, which I won't be. I have all that rice in there I'll probably have for breakfast. Here's an MRE. Here's all things I talked about. Look at that. 90% off these windshield things. I have a whole bunch of propane in here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six more cylinders in here. Doubt I'll go through those, but here's the $1 emergency blankets. They sure work good for this. That one ripped a few times, so that has reinforcement with duct tape. I have some protein shakes in here that I can have for breakfast or even on my walk out of here. Those are always good when you're too lazy like me to sit down and actually have something to eat. Got a backup lighter. See, I got these really nice rubber uh, bungees, if that's even what they're called. Gloves. I got a hat with a light built into it. And that is everything I have in my shelter. So if I want to open the floor in here, I just simply go ahead and I have to pull this mattress up a little bit, push the sled a little bit, then I can slide the floor. If I put a bunch of weight on this with my knee, it'll bend a little bit where I can push this easily. I accidentally, when I was cleaning something, I think it was the hot dog package, so nothing, no animal smelled it. I accidentally had this thing up here. Uh, it got burnt a little bit by the heater. Melted, I should say. I can still use this for a lot longer before that starts ripping too severely. But this is not really replaceable. The, well, it is, but I'm sure it would be a lot. This is a actually a very old mattress, probably close to 30 years old. It's actually not made out of nylon like the newer things. The underneath is made out of rubber, and this is actually made out of a fabric. I know that because I accidentally dropped something hot on it, and I thought it was going to leave a hole. It didn't. This is actually made out of some kind of fabric, not the fake junk of today. And this pillow goes right here that seals that hole right there. And because of the crinkling sound, yes, I do wear, wear earplugs like I mentioned. And the earplugs don't block everything out. I can still hear the water, but it at least covers this up because last time when I culvert camp, you saw it in that metal culvert where I actually put a wood stove in the culvert. That was pretty cool. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to, to be able to say I'm the first one to ever use a wood stove in a culvert because I've never seen that done before. And yeah, it worked. Not one person complained, even though I, I ran the wood stove for eight hours. And I know a couple snowmobiles went by. If they even noticed where the smoke was coming from, probably not. They probably didn't care because a lot of people were camping out there. They just probably didn't know where it was coming from. Now, camping in a culvert like this, you know, you always have to evaluate your risks with it. Biggest risk of camping in a culvert pipe is obviously, what if it floods? This part of the country, we don't really have flash floods, so that's really not a concern to me. You just have to check the forecast. Um, if there's a lot of rain in the forecast or very warm temperatures with all the snow on the ground, then you're obviously going to want to not camp in there. Today was just below freezing. A little bit of melting will take place, but not anything dangerous. Tonight's going to be well below freezing. Tomorrow's going to be a snowstorm right around freezing. Not a, not a risk. If anything, I think by the time, since I've been in here for the past 14 hours or so, almost 14 hours, I have, I think the water's actually gone down a little bit beneath me. There was a big ice dam that melted out of the way. Because in temperatures like this, when it's just slightly below freezing, the snow on the surface isn't melting unless you have a strong sun angle, which we're starting to get because we're in March. But that being said, today was kind of cloudy, and also 
Groundwater's warm. So it has to be really cold for a groundwater stream like this to freeze solid. Who knows, by the time I wake up, my snowshoes might be thrown down into the plunge pool. Because I left them on top of the ice dam, but it melted a lot before the sun went down. I have another six, seven, eight, almost ten hours before the sun comes up. I'm not tired at all because, like I said, I slept all day and... I'm going to try to sleep again, but right now I'm just kind of bored, so. Yeah, I got all my editing done for the, my main channel's video of this, and there's no signal in here. There was one out by the road. Yeah, I, I'm literally not going to leave this pipe for 24 hours. That's what this is going to end up being. I didn't plan on purposely staying in here, but I just don't want to risk breaking too many of these things where I can't put them back up easily. Whoa! But it is nice and warm in here. It's actually getting too warm now with this thing. Put it back to just pilot light. It is now about 105 degrees in here, which is about 40 degrees Celsius it's showing. Yeah, it's not nearly that hot when I'm down here, but I have this thermometer kind of high because this is that's where my head is right now. When I first came out here, I thought this was going to be a five-foot culvert, but I'm thinking it's four and a half because it was a four-foot culvert I slept in last time, and I didn't have all this headroom above me. I was actually crouched, but I can sit in here perfectly. My tea is nice and cool now. I can go ahead and have some of that. I don't put sugar or anything in there. I just have it plain. I don't know what kind of this is because I actually bought this like five years ago. It's just mint and I'm just trying to use it up so I just keep bringing it camping. I can usually make a couple batches of tea with one bag before it gets too bland. I actually bought this bear spray for my western trip because a black bear is not likely to mess with you. Even if a black bear came in here sniffing out food that it could smell, it's most likely going to run away as soon as you wake up. I don't even know it. You know, bears, they are known for coming into tents, but other things like coyotes, they wouldn't come near you. They're just going to smell you and they'll back off. Um, yeah. So I thought I should do a video just showing everything I have in here. Yep. See, right here I ripped it so I have a little bit of tape. These, this light, it's running on very low. On low, it'll run on these power banks for like... close to a day. It's been running now 13 hours and it only drained it down to 47%. But also keep in mind, these things, for some reason, they stop working when they get below 20% or so at some point. They don't make it down to zero, and I don't know why. I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching.